Bowler. I haven't got all day. This is a bowler for you, little screw. And I shan't be able to give you more than two stars in my guide to British Nicks. No lift and crack pose. Yuck. Breakfast uh, at the uh, Ritz, I think. Ritz, Mayfair. Oh, my word. It is typical of your class to end in my class, Harris. Class? You'll never have class if you live to be 100. You're just an East End boy. No. That's all finished. I'm going to be up there. Living with the creme. Being one of the creme. Never in a million years, Bowler. <laughs> oh, well, this is the way to have the barnet done, Marcus. Barnet, sir? Oh, oh, I think it must be uh, working class rhyming slang, Barnet Fair Air. <laughs> oh, uh, very funny, sir. I must tell that to the young Earl. Earl? What Earl? But the Earl of St Andrews, sir. I have the privilege of attending him once monthly. But that's the Duke of Kent's kitty, isn't it? Yes, sir. Oh, I like it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, that's not washing up liquid, is it? Oh, no, sir. It's a private solution. Swiss mountain herbs with palm nut oil. Oh, super, Stephanie, super. Don't forget to clean my cubicles. <laughs> I've waxed the car, Mr. Bowler. Oh, thanks, Reg. <laughs> Is something tickling you? Yeah, you in an air net. You can withdraw to the servants' quarters. Can you go on in London, sir? Oh, yes, Richmond, by the palace, a beautiful house with lawns, sweeping down to the river, centrally heated boathouse. I know Richmond quite well. Whereabouts? Oh, uh, well, it's, it's been pulled down now. But, of course, uh, I do try to re-engender the elegance of those days. Like my doorbell. Of course, uh, Mother lives uh, in Cheltenham now, quietly, when she's not in Bermuda. Well, I'll go to the foot of our stairs if he's wearing air nets now. <laughs> Mum, uh, Mother, are you down in town doing some shopping at Arrods? I've been down the market. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'll come here to cook you a good wholesome dinner for a change. Oh, lovely. Can we have dumplings, Mrs Bowler? Of course you can. How much longer is that poncing about going to last? <laughs> Almost finished, madam. Mr Bowler was just telling us about your house in uh, Richmond. Richmond? Rather I. Uh, mother, wouldn't you like to withdraw to the ladies' powder room? I had one at Minnie's on the way over. <laughs> Here, of course, we have been to Richmond, you know. What, well, just for a day's outing? Oh. Oh, I must have misunderstood. I mean, I think I didn't probably explain very clearly. Like about the two nannies. Oh, he had them all right. There was my mother and his father's mother. Oh, those sort of nannies. Well, there we are, sir. Thank you for a most entertaining morning. Pay the barber his money. Shut up. <laughs> he sends a bill. Marcus, uh, shall we say next Thursday week? Very well, sir. I'll send... Uh, an assistant. <laughs> you come yourself or I'll take my custom to Vidal so soon. <laughs> now look what you've done. You've got to let me down in front of somebody who's had his hands on the Earl of St Andrew's head. Only got yourself to blame, same as usual, putting on in them airs and graces. I don't put anything on. When will you understand it all comes natural? What does? Being a bleeding aristocrat. Not so long as you've got an hole in your ear. I'll throw some other things, my Mrs treasure. Bowler. Come here, my treasure. We're going to settle this breeding once and for all. You get down to Somerset House. What for? To look the Bowler family up back as far as you can go. Somewhere there must be one. One what? A blue blood who has given me this disgrace, <laughs> this feeling for the grand manor. Now get your skates on. 
I'll keep your dinner for you, Rage, dear. Thanks, Mrs. Bowler. And there's another thing. I'm not eating that peasant food. It offends the palate. You'll eat what I cook if I have to stand over you with a rolling pin. <coughs> we'll see who's got blue blood in his veins. I must have. Somewhere. I must have. Maybe they'll find I'm a throwback. <laughs> hey, Amanda Raya. <laughs> Oh, no. Maybe a missing link. Yeah. I dub the now, Sir Stanley Bowler. Oh. Come on, you, your dinner's ready. I like it, I like it! What are you grinning all over your face for? Oh, you wouldn't understand, Mother. I've just had a trans-incidental experience. By the way, these reds back here. Yes, and halfway through his dinner. Yeah, you stop feeding your face. Where's my gubbins from Somerset House? There, they've only got records back for five generations. That will be quite enough to prove my noble heritage. Now then. Father. Uh, well, we know all know about him. Yeah, one of the really great villains of his day. Thank you, Reg. Grandfather. <laughs> Bricklayer. <laughs> great grandfather. Better. Clark. And his father. Oh. Well? Organ grinder. <laughs> <laughs> In brackets, itinerant musician. He was an organ grinder. <laughs> oh, all right. Shut up. There's still one more to go. I like this. It's like playing happy family. Yes. Will you shut, shut up? up? Now then. Oh, you see, I knew it. Class will out. Joshua Bowler, born 1818. No fixed employment. <laughs> Didn't have to work, see, obviously, amount of worth and standing. Died 1859. Oh. Where did he die? Debtors prison in Newgate. <laughs> <laughs> Will you stop laughing at Perrier? I'll sue Somerset House for this. They set themselves up to be special. I want to get rid of juice. This rubbish. Oh, let it lie, Stan. So your ancestors were as common as my... Why let it bother you? Because you don't breed a derby winner out of cart horses. <laughs> and somewhere there is a thoroughbred strain in me and it's coming out and I'm going to find it. How? Yeah, you could ring up William the Conqueror and ask him if he knows anybody by the name of Bowler. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Reg, sometimes your wit is about as subtle as a steamroller. That's not a bad idea, though. Yeah, uh, William the Conqueror's not on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's been dead for years. I know that. I'm just going to trace my family further and further back now. How do you go back in time? Yeah. I read a book once by H.G. Wells. He had a time machine. Oh, great. Nip round to Harrods and buy me one. Well, how do you do it then? No. There are specialists who do the job they do for their living. They'll dig back as far as you can want them to. What's that called? Oh, yeah, I've got it. Reg, yellow pages. I need a gynaecologist. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes for Sandy. <laughs> D for door. Oh, oh, come in. Morning, Professor. Brought in the milk. Oh, thank you <laughs> very much. How did you get on at the Playboy Cup last night? Visa. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you are, life membership, all taken care of. Oh, Mr. Bowler, I'm overwhelmed by your kindness. Oh, kindness to me is just being nice to people. One of my little mottos, Mr. Bowler. Mottos. <laughs> Besides, having unearthed my ancestors, you deserve a bit of bunce. Now, what have you got for me? Oh, um, where were we? Um, uh, where... Oh, I know. G, G, G for glasses. Oh, Hang thank about. You, uh... G for glasses, yeah. We were in the 15th century, where by some extraordinary quirl of fate, <laughs> this uh, ancestor of mine turned out to be a swineherd. 
Oh, yes, of course. Mad Rufus Bowler. Oh, don't. Don't. And um, with him, I'm afraid there's a broken chain. We have no record of his father. Oh, that's great, isn't it? I am descended from a mad pig breeder who's come out of thin air. Ah, ah, ah. But uh, just an M for moment. Now, where are we? Just look at this, yes. Uh, oh, I'm looking. Great, great Plantagenet families. Oh, I'm <laughs> looking. Yes. Uh, Duke Geoffrey de Bola, in English, of course, Bola, died 1390. Immediately preceding Mad Rufus. I knew it! <laughs> I knew it! Blood as blue as a copper's lung. Yeah. <laughs> and Rufus was his kitty. Yes, but there is a snag. What? Duke Geoffrey had no children. Oh, piddle! Yes. <laughs> but, 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 B, B for but. <laughs> And I'm going to be a naughty old antiquarian here. <laughs> Observe. Two coats of arms. This one, as you can see, lion rampant on a field of ermine, quartered with cups couchant on a field of azure dexter. Well, I mean, that goes without saying, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but you notice the difference in the coat of arms that appears on Sir Geoffrey's tomb. Yeah, it's smaller, isn't it? Well, that is merely the size of illustration. Oh, hell twit! <laughs> Press on. Yes, but have you noticed? The cubs have been blocked out. Now, what does that suggest? He didn't like lion cubs. <laughs> <laughs> I think not. Might it not suggest that the uh, dying duke, that is the lion, wishes to erase the disgrace brought on by his son, that is, the lion cub? I get it. <laughs> Jim Jeffrey gave his boy the old Evo because he'd gone off his trolley. <laughs> but he's definitely his boy. How very graphic. Well, I don't care if it was a nutter. He was descended from Jim Jeffrey and I'm descended from him. Ergot. I am definitely a bit of class. <laughs> 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 Professor Franklin, you have just won a prize off my top shelf. New building, new furniture, new home. You ask for it, you get it. <laughs> but I, I, I'm afraid there's a snag. What? A uh, proof, Mr. Bowler. How do we prove our assumption? Backhanded to the College of Errols. <laughs> but if we could find the grave of Mad Rufus and find evidence that he was indeed Sir Geoffrey's disinherited son, then... Bingo! Right on, man. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a phrase I must have picked up from Bunny Angela at the Playboy Club. Right, so where is this grave? Well, it's under the rear premises of a chemist shop. Eh? Yes. Well, the, uh, where are we? The village of Druid's Water. Ancient and modern. As you can see, part of the grave is now under a shop. And it is there that I think Mad Rufus must be buried, because I've searched the rest of the graveyard thoroughly. Well, all we've got to do is to get permission to dig under the shop. Yes, I have. Oh, good. Permission refused. Philistines! Yes, I'm afraid there's no end to it, and no way out. I mean, we can hardly dig under a shop against the owner's wishes. Well, absolutely. I mean, it would mean breaking in. Yes, quite. And that's absolutely illegal. Totally reprehensible. When are you going to do it? Sunday. Hoffman. Nice weekend. No. I gardened. Nor me. I knitted. I nearly phoned you, Miss Hoffman. Did you? Yes. But then I didn't. <laughs> I know. I was in all weekend. So was I. Knitting. 
No, gardening. One of these days, Miss Hoffman. Yes? One, uh, one of these days, Miss Hoffman, something is going to happen in this shop. Oh. What? 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 Tony Woods and restless woman there. And ladies, if you saw the way Tony does the number, let me tell you, you'd be restless too. Warming up on the turntable right now. Pink sable. And... You get back down the hole! <laughs> well, if you don't come up with something, I'll bury you in there. I love you! <laughs> Buffoons! I'd have been better off with some more. They were wheelers, lot. I'll give them till Sunday morning, and here we are Monday. Well, they didn't know they was going to hit a layer of concrete, did they, Mr Bowler? They've got no pride in their work. That's their trouble. Morning. Can I have a chance to be bottle of bismuth, please? Oh, bismuth, madam. Bismuth. Bis ah, bismuth. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Call again. Do call again, madam. Thank you. Yeah, that's brown the old cape, and that is. It wouldn't take Edison to invent putting a clothes sign up on a door, would it? Oh, no. no. You hey, can't do that, Mr Bowler. It's illegal. Yeah, well, what Drillon and the boys are doing in the back end exactly a coach part, is it? No, it says here that a chemist in the district has to be open, and today it's this one. If the law finds it's closed, they're going to tumble something's up. Right. Un moment. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's rather nice. Oh. Oh, Scoo's high, I'm sure. <laughs> Does it suit me, Reg? Here, you're not going to make that your... Look, I'm here to prove that I'm a duke, and I will play the clarinet at the police ball to do that. <laughs> I am going to make you a bargain offer. Not a load of old junk, but a bargain offer. No, don't go away, don't go away. I'm going to attempt the impossible. I'm going to make you look more beautiful than you already are. <laughs> no, 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 don't laugh. Your dazzling radiance has persuaded me to buy one of these and ground double Polaroid sunglasses. And I'm giving them away, not a three pounds, not a two pounds, but a 250. Oh. Customer over there. There you are. Oh, incidentally, this is Andre. I him specially imported from the salons of Paris. Now, watch me, watch me. Now, what have we here? Oh, yes, one pair of eyelashes as worn by Cleopatra. <laughs> well, they drove Mark Anthony stark staring, raiding mad. So, what are they going to do to your old man? Go on alone, man. <laughs> well, leave them there. Now, then. Oh, I, oh, you like this. You like this. What is this? Yeah. Don't want any hair? You don't need to have it. With one dab of this, you can wear the sheerest tights without your legs looking like flu brushes. Did I say one pair of tights? <laughs> no, I mean one pair of tights, two pairs of tights. Who can swim? Who here can swim? There you go, girl. That's for free. I bet you're wondering, how can he afford it? Well, I can't, but I love the lady so that here we go. One tube of aphrodisiac toothpaste. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Two tins of baby food. Got no babies, girl. <laughs> Got cats. Oh, yes. Oh, cats love it. What have this happened? Oh, what? <laughs> they finish it. One bag oh, of toilet rinse. The contents are secret between you and me. There you go. That's your oh, lot. Yeah, yeah. The biggest cosmetic bonanza since Elizabeth Taylor. Now, how much am I asking for it? I'll tell you how much I'm asking for it. How much would you give in Paris, Andre? Did you hear that? 800 francs. But I'm not asking 800. <laughs> I'm not asking seven, I'm not asking six, I'm not... Oh, I can't go bankrupt even for you. Fall back, fall back a lot. Fall back a lot. There we go, girls. There we go. Give some money, take the bags. All right, lovelies. There we are. Fall back again. Come back again. Yeah, but not until you have us. We've got over this lot. Well done, girls. Well done. God, that was good, that was, wasn't it, yes. Mr Bowler? Just not being down the line. Still got your old spill, ain't ya? Yeah, I've still got my appendix. Well, don't help me any. God, and you loved it. A pose. A mere pose, Rich. Mr. Bowler, Mr. Bowler, we found a grave. Oh, my God. Let's give him my stomach a turn. <laughs> oh, oh, shut up, Bismuth. Don't you know what this means to me? Through that door may be my key to the House of Lords. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? There it is, Mr. Bowler. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Ruth 
famous bowler. Now I know how Captain Cook felt when he discovered America. <laughs> now that's, that's, that's. No, no, that is my right, Charlie. <laughs> this hand out. You don't stand with that sort in front of a duke. Just fine, Little Grave doesn't prove you're a duke, you know. Well, this does because it's got a D bowler coat of arms on it. Duke Stanley Bowler, this is your life. <laughs> They've kept their word. They've gone, Miss Hoffman. Oh, I think they must have been Cupid's messengers, Mr. Porter. I'll just check the storeroom. No, no, everything's all right there. Mr. Porter? In there? It wasn't just cupboard love, was it? <laughs> I'll check the till. Oh. That's more than we take in a month. Oh, Mr. Porter? Just an upper-class jape, PTO. No need to go to the police. Are we corruptible, Miss Hoffman? Oh, yes. <laughs> then we'll buy the three-piece suite with this. Oh, Mr. Porter. Oh. <laughs> Cheese up, Mr. Bowler. Mr. Bowler! <laughs> Your Grace. <laughs> yes, Walters. <laughs> oh, jolly up there's Walters. What do you keep calling me Walters for? Uh, Ducal Protocol, Walters. I'm going to have a change in the ambience of all my things now. So much to do, Walters. I've got to buy my ermine and my coronet, look to my seat in the House of Lords, and uh, probably reclaim all my ancient lands. <laughs> Portals! Eh? The door! Oh. <laughs> I wonder if I own the whole of Berkshire. Hello, Reg. What was all this you was telling me on the phone, Stackley? Hey, what's going on here? Flag day? All part of it, ma'am. I have written evidence that I am descended from the ancient family of the bowler, which makes me a duke. And it makes Doreen a duchess. And it makes you... A diary, Duchess. This is not true, is it? I'm afraid so. Oh, my Godfathers! There'll be no old in him now. I always knew that those inner feelings were not indigestion. I always knew it as sure as I am my father's son. You're not, as a matter of fact. <laughs> what? What did you say? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I never said nothing. Oh, yes, you did. You said I wasn't my father's son. What do you mean? Well, you'll have to know now. You see, he was inside a lot, and I was younger then, and... Well, we had this lodger, see? <laughs> no, I'm not the bowler. It's all been for nothing. What was this Randy Lodger's name? <laughs> Harry something. Windsor, that's it. Harry Windsor. Oh, my God, I'm descending from a bowl of soup. Never mind, Mr Windsor. Oh, jeez, dog. He had some lovely table manners. Oh, leave me alone. What'd you say his name was? Windsor. Why? Oh, nothing special. <laughs> it's just that somebody of the same name lives at Buckingham Palace. <laughs> I think I might be just about in time for tea. <laughs> <laughs>